Great lineup. Incarceration.com. Tickets, everything else is there for you. I got GA weekend passes for you. That is July 14th, 15th, and 16th out at the Ohio State Reformatory. So good luck. Caller 10. You got two passes here for incarceration. We'll see you there. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Some things are never meant to be discussed in polite society. Welcome to Impolite Society. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Ah. It'll be a lot of fun to see Volby. I've seen them. They're These great. guys are pretty wild. They're, yeah. They're- Fantastic live. They do a very, very good job of melding a lot of different styles, mm-hmm. and it never sounds weird. I like those guys a lot. Um, the uh, next chance for you to grab some money is minutes away here, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Probably about six or seven minutes from now. So listen for that next chance for you to win. A Guardians game that was set for 640 tonight in Detroit has been rained out. They are not going to play the Tigers tonight. Cavaliers will be back here at home for game two of the playoffs against the Knicks. That's a 7.30 tip-off here on WMMS uh, tomorrow night. I have a basketball question. Uh, orange. Orange. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. No, why do we get rid of Kevin Love? Why do we get rid of him? Get yes. rid of him? He wanted more money, right? No, no, no. Uh, he, was, he was got an expiring contract, and he wasn't <clears throat> fitting into the rotation anymore. So, we, we, you know, he's older now long in the tooth a little long in the tooth he wasn't able to keep up on defense he wasn't really contributing much on the offensive end as much so they're like all right let's cut him loose so he can go someplace it was basically a favor to him so he can go to a team where he is going to get on the court okay because brian was watching the game last night the heat game Mm -hmm. and kevin love came off the bench with 18 points and he's going on and on about how Stupid it was to cut a player with playoff experience and someone who's good. And mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about it, so I wanted to see what it had actually happened there. Part Here's of it, what I'm going to say about that. They're playing against the Bucks without Giannis. So that's their best player. Is out. So, the, like, I'm not looking at that game being like, oh, Kevin Love had this amazing game. He was playing against a, a team that was hobbled, basically. Okay. So I, 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 I think Kevin Love still had some to contribute, but I think, like, I'm okay with the move Yeah. overall. Rumors were, too, that word had started to get out that because of Pound Cake Getting constantly hot. drooling over yeah. him, that he felt Uncomfortable. less secure uh, in Cleveland. He felt, uh, I wouldn't say it rose to the level of um, worrying about his safety, but that uh, it got to the point where, you know, as two public figures might possibly collide, it, it just got to be more and more awkward. Uh, Kevin Love walking around town. Not that he ever really spent any appreciable amount of time here, but the chances were still that he could have bumped into Pound Cake, and that would have been awkward for everyone. I mean, so I, that was part of it too. I bumped into a Cavs player before. I, actually, I bumped into to the same Cavs player uh, at two different locations. I, I met- first time Pound Cake touched a booby. Hey. <laughs> I met, I ran into, uh, actually, Corver took my parking spot at Chipotle, and then I saw, yep, and I was pissed. He was, you know, a lot of guys look like Kyle Corver. You sure it was him? It was him. He had a big black Range Rover. It was him. I saw him. He had, he had the unibrow. It was him. And then I saw Corver again at this pumpkin patch with his family. So, and I I was going to sneak a picture, but I was like, that's not cool. Did you smell him? No, he was with his family. Sniffing History, the new podcast Mm -hmm. from, uh. Okay. Although you didn't even do a podcast last week, we were gone. No, he was too busy sleeping. No, I was doing other stuff, but yeah, probably sleeping. Sleep is good. So is your podcast just like whenever you feel like it? It's now? just going to be on hiatus until I have time to do it. I, I want to. I'm probably just going to do it with like a couple episodes in the bag, like just have them, and then that way I don't have to do it from week to week. So they have to be. They can't be dated, if that makes sense. You have to, they have to be evergreen. Yeah. <laughs> Dramatic pause. Yeah. yeah they yeah. have to be evergreen. You're That's too, right. You're too busy for 35 minutes a week? Yes. 
Listen, he's under no obli- he's under no obligation. He I should know. he should do it when the mood strikes. No, I am I am too busy for thirty five extra minutes a week. Yes. Okay. Just wondering. I'll tell you what. Speaking of Evergreen, when we were out in Sedona, one of our last days there, we did a horseback riding trail through the mountains. It was a seven and up. So it was me and Gwen and our daughter, each on horses, right? It was, did you guys do anything like that out there? We didn't do horses. It no. was unbelievable. It was transformative. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. That's awesome. Dude. Riding a horse? Yeah, I haven't been on a horse. Like, my older daughter is an equestrian, so she had been riding. But that was like showing horses, right? But she'd been riding. She'd been riding since she was like five or something. And, you know, she's 18 now. And she doesn't do it anymore because she's at college. But that was my experience with horses. I hadn't been on a horse since I couldn't tell you. Not as an adult. Haven't been on a horse since I was a kid. And so I was a little trepidatious about it. Um... But we get up there, and, you know, it's it's, it's mountainous. Mm-hmm. It's very rocky terrain in the Arizona mountains. And you have a guy at the front, and you have a couple other cow pokes that are kind of, you know, pace carring you around the trail. And there were maybe a dozen of us on this trail. But a very narrow trail, very rocky. And obviously, these are very well-trained horses. They know what they're doing. It's a tourist thing, right? I never worry about it that much. But a horse can slip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're on the edge of this ravine, uh, you know, to really drive home the point of where you are. And, and it was unbelievable. Well, so you start off with my, a horse girl. My now. horse was named Peter Pan. Aww, did my you daughter's horse was named Bob. No, I didn't. Why would no. you make a wish? Because Peter Pan. Uh, oh, that's Cinderella. A dream is a wish your heart makes. <laughs> I thought that was Peter Pan. Don't know that movie. either. I hey, will just wishes. tell you. <laughs> That um, uh, Peter Pan uh, took care of me. Although you look pretty dopey. 28. Yeah. <laughs> look pretty dopey because you have to wear helmets, obviously. Yes. Except the helmets are covered. They want you to look like a cowboy. So it's like a helmet, biking helmet with a big hat on. Oh, <laughs> I love so, that. It does not look cool. Awesome. I mean, you, you know, but man, it was fun. Uh, devotion to accuracy. Yes, go ahead. There are no mountains in Sedona. They're all rock formations. Did you learn that from the autistic kid that was following you guys around at the zoo? <laughs> no, I learned that from Jeff, the pink Jeep tour guide. Ah. Yes, he said that. He said, a common mistake. These are called mountains all the time. There are no mountains in Sedona. They are all rock formations. Okay. Well, we were very high up in the rock formations. There you go. Yes. You're welcome. And it was very exciting. Um, Blake right? is seven. Your daughter is seven. Yeah. I don't know if your child ever stops talking, but ours does not. And um, right from the minute she met Jeff, our tour guide on the pink Jeep tour, um, she was like, I'm going to have a lot of questions. Is it okay? He's like, I'll answer every question that you have, Blake. And I was like, you don't even know what you're saying. Right. And it was every 10 to 15 seconds she had a new question for Jeff. Whether It would be things that he just said. This is a prickly pear cactus. You can make ice cream or this or that from it. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> like, hey, Blake. She's like, what kind of cactus is that? <laughs> like, yeah, she didn't ask a lot of questions, <laughs> yeah. but she's she's always got a lot of comments. Yeah, yeah for um, sure. She made a new bestie out there. Aw. And so that was good. She met a girl at the pool one day who was there with her grandmother. The grandma lives in, I, I'm, I'm there with her, obviously, so I'm talking to the grandma. Lois is the grandma, and Lillian is the little girl. Such a grandma name. Lois. Lois. Grandma Lois. Mm-hmm. She lives in D.C. Uh, her, do- her granddaughter there, Lillian, is, her parents are in the military. So they're both at Fort Polk in Louisiana. That's where she lives. And so Lois is talking to me. He's like, what? I want her to come to <laughs> Louisiana. Yeah, whatever. But um, this kid latches on to my daughter. They latch on to each other. Mm-hmm. Like from the jump. I think little girls are like that. Like when they feel Maybe a connection, they, are, they just. Because it turns out they're both only children. So I'm sure that's a big part of it too. But they're going to be pen pals now and Aww. the whole thing. They like. They exchanged bracelets and and we're shopping for a necklace for this kid because <laughs> yeah. Nora's laser focused on getting her one and we so making s'mores the whole bit. The area that Brian's parents have a house in, there's two residence clubs that oh. they're members of. Oh. So the one day we went to the pool at the residence club and kind of a similar thing happened. There was another little girl there. Um, she was nine though, 
and Blake and her got along. They were did she had like those diving sticks where you like throw them in the pool and you got to go under and get them. They sink to the bottom. Okay. So they were playing that, and um, this little girl had an au pair with her, mm. which is just a live-in nanny. Yes. Brian didn't know that. He had never usually heard from that another term. country. From Germany. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's gonna live it for a year. She was there with her grandparents. And um, we're getting to talk to her. This little girl who's nine has real short hair, and it's dyed 50-50 green and purple. Mm -hmm. And um, Blake was like, that's so cool. I wish I could dye my hair. And this girl was like, oh, yeah, I just grew my hair back. And we're like, oh, well, what happened? And she told us she had lymphoma. She had cancer. And she spent six months in the hospital. And that makes you grow your hair back green and pink? Yes. Isn't that crazy? All the chemotherapy they're putting in hair dye now. All the little things. Um. But Blake, I don't think Blake had ever talked to a kid who has been... I've never talked to a kid who's been sick like that before, you know? Yeah. And she was saying how she has her last scan coming did, up. I didn't get there in time. Oh, Bill, come on. What? what? No, that was late. they're fine now. Oh, I thought you were saying that the kid died, and that's why you couldn't talk to them, you jerk. They were better before he got to see him. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't get to talk to you while you were sick. Ah, unbelievable. Remission. Right, of this experience. <laughs> but, um... So she's telling us about how she spent like six months in the hospital, and all of us are kind of not uncomfortable, but she's a little kid. Yeah, my nephew's know? my nephew is finally in remission. He's had cancer since he was one. Dude, that's crazy. He's and five now. We were just like, that you're a really tough kid. Like, good for you. We're so happy for you. And Blake, I think, is trying to relate. And and this girl's like, Yeah, I spent six months in the hospital. I watched a lot of TV. And Blake goes, you know what happened to me once? And I was like, oh, God, here we oh, go. Oh, trying to run up the cancer, <laughs> kid. This isn't going to go she well, goes, Blake. She goes, I burnt my foot last year on a coal, and I couldn't do anything for a week. Yeah. And the little girl who had cancer goes, that's hard. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she's like, hurt at all at this point. I'm <laughs> sure she has. Broke, I felt so bad for her. And I, we're not going to correct her. It's not like Blake was trying to one-up her. I think she just didn't know how to relate to her, right. you know? Um, that's all she had was burned foot. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's all she like. Yeah, I had bandages on my foot for a week. And <laughs> is that girl, like cancer? And you like, chimed no. in. You could have been like, and it felt like six months because she was so whiny. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, they they became like really close friends. Like, can we go back and see Kieran the next day? We got to go see Kieran. We got to go do this. But yeah. So rock formations, not mountains. Yes. Plenty of rock formations. Let me give you some money here. It's a thousand bucks, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. I hope you win. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Fun. That's fun. Enter it now at WMMS.com. It's funny that you mentioned that this kid had cancer. The guy that opened for me at Hilarity's last night, he had cancer as a kid, and he's a very funny. His name's Eitan Levine. He's from New York, and he talks about it in his act a lot. And it makes people very uncomfortable, mm-hmm. obviously, because he's talking about having cancer. He's like, guys. I'm alive. I'm he- <laughs> I'm here. Look at all this hair I have. I'm obviously okay. Let's enjoy these because he talks about how he got to meet all these, like, sports figures because he's like a make-a-wish kid. Oh, yeah. And he met all these kids, but he was like, they, none of the teams were good at the time. <laughs> so he's meeting all these players that are like losers. <laughs> Aww. Oh, man. This could be like the last thing he sees is some C string yeah. baseball player. Yeah. It was very funny, though. So I don't know if, uh, what was her name? Kieran? Yes. She had that same experience. She didn't his. say anything about Make a Wish or she didn't say anything about meeting any celebrities. She said she watched a lot of movies she and met a lot the of Mary TV. Santora. Yeah. That was good for So them. you guys did the pink Jeep tour in Sedona. Yes. Yeah, we didn't do that. Did they tell you about the color ordinance out there? What do you mean? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so Sed- only? <laughs> well, no, Sedona has a thing where because they want all of their architecture to blend into the environment, that they have a color ordinance. No, I didn't hear about so that. So like McDonald's, there's there was a McDonald's a few miles away. We passed it on this particular tour, and he pointed out that that's why that McDonald's the golden arches were turquoise blue. Mm-hmm, the only one in the country. Yeah. And he's like, so, uh, and he goes, and the residential streets, most of them don't have street lights. Off the main drags, there's no street lights because it's a designated dark sky city. Mm-hmm. There's only about 20 of them in the country where it's like, they, they try to, you know, kind of walk the walk as far as light pollution goes. I and actually love that. It's awesome. There's I mean, when one you're out there. Here. Yeah. There's is there one really? To, well, Brian grew up in Chesterland, and he said there's one not far from where he lived, where yeah. it's one of those dark cities or whatever. 
And I guess it's one of like the best stargazing spots in the country. It's unbelievable yeah. at night out there. Yeah. So this guy was basically kind of telling us this this dude who was driving because we were like, how long have you been out of here? Because he said co- uh, COVID really blew Sedona up. A lot of like Bay Area tech types came out and all that kind of stuff, bought up the land or whatever. But he's like, there's a no, they, they can't have billboards there. So like now that you, you're saying you're not going to look up. Yeah. yeah. If they hadn't mentioned it to you, you might not have known. But I mean, I was like, that is awesome. That yeah. is great. Because just being where I was in rural Pennsylvania, there was no real light pollution either. So the stars at night were large and, and in, in charge, charge. In, uh, invisible. <laughs> I didn't want to say big and bright. Large uh, and visible. <laughs> large you don't want to get anybody upset. And it's it's now that I think about it, there's probably a time because we stayed up pretty late, and you were on that stargazing tour. We we're looking up at the stars at the same <gasps> oh, time, Alan. Same moon. Oh, look at mm. that! I'll tell you what. Half the week you're getting used to being on that time, Ugh. So, right? So you're like, I'm falling asleep at like seven thirty yeah, at nine, night. Everyone was out by nine p.m. every and then, night. And then the back half. You're like getting used to it, and then you come back here, and now I, I still can't get to sleep at like one in the morning because I, you know. Maybe if you were like pound cake and you caught up on your sleep, it wouldn't be <laughs> such a big deal. If oh, I dude. mostly slept the week away, dude was so mad. I at mostly me. slept. He was mad at me because even on the trip, I'm like, all right, well, I love vacations that we don't have an agenda. We could do whatever we want. And I would sleep in to like eleven. And he booked this hotel that ga- gave 11? you eleven. Free- How free- do you not like wake up? Well, you, you you were asleep till eleven. I would sleep in. I usually sleep in till eleven. Like that is my morning when I don't have anything to do. Wow. Um, and so I'm angry if I wake up before then. Like I'm I'm evil. I told her. I, I said. How I'm, late are you up though? No, that's any time. Any time you can stay asleep until eleven a.m. Uh, Sunday when I got home, <laughs> or Sunday. I woke up at noon and we were supposed to do brunch. And he's wow. like, come over to my house at noon. And I was like, I didn't even see your text because I just woke up at 1225. So, um, yes, I told him it's not personal. I'm evil before 11 a.m. But he had booked a hotel that get, gave us like a free breakfast every morning. He's like, hey, he's like, we have breakfast waiting for you. I was like, eh, it's free breakfast. <laughs> like, So I hopped up <laughs> we, and we went all the way down to the breakfast. And I was like, the sausage was kind of cold, but I was like, it's OK. Everything else is pretty good. You and, just got a boyfriend. You're like calling him the cold sausage. Yeah. So <laughs> we had the breakfast and went back up they and went to lost sleep. lost the spark. I already, yeah, we had the breakfast and I went back up and went to sleep until uh, we had like something to do. Wow. So you'll go to bed and you'll st- like, you'll wake up at eight, but then go back to sleep. You don't stay asleep until noon. I can. Sometimes I do. How? How? Yeah. Dude, I, I am like a toddler, man. I'm telling you, I need like 18 hours of sleep a day. I love sleep. And then Me another too. six at night. I love the comfort of a warm blanket and just like a big, wide open bed. No, that's all great. I, I just don't know how your today. I don't know how your body can stay asleep that long. Because I'm not. It's not like I'm getting. I, I go to bed on a normal night. A normal night where I'm working a normal schedule, it'd be like I go to bed at midnight. So midnight at 11 eight, hours of sleep. But, like, there I'm, is no but. Eleven hours of sleep is normal for your body. But no, I'm. But no, I'm that's saying not I, normal. On a, on oh, a week, you're just saying he can do that on a day because on a day off. I think it's making up for the sleep that I didn't get during the week. So if I go hmm. to bed at midnight and I have to work at eight a.m., you know, I'm not sleeping all the way through the night. I don't think. Like, I'm sure I have broken sleep, but on Saturday and Sunday, like the days where I'm off, absolutely, I can sleep into eleven. Wow. I can sleep in further. I've woken up at like. 2 p.m. before, and I was like, oh, Scott, I'm like, 2? It's light outside. I was thinking like 2 a.m. No, bitch. Two, it's 2 p.m. I will say the and- best part of a vacation is we don't have our dog. Oh, nice. I love our dog, but our dog's clicking and clacking all night long, walking around and drinking water. I'm like, just lay down. Your dog is annoying. <laughs> she just has so much energy. doesn't matter how much you run her. I can throw uh-huh. the ball until my goddamn hands fall off. She'll still be clicking and clack. I mean, she'll sleep sometime, but my, it's like, you my, know. My dog likes to sleep, and I, like, oh, I mean, great. when we play, we play, and she gets all her energy out, but when it is time to sleep, she is just out like a light, and she's very good about my sleeping. My dog she's is like 12 years old, by the yeah. way, and she still runs like she's two. See, that's why I like having There's a cat. There's no wearing my dog out. My cat comes and cuddles up. Brian leaves for work in the morning around 5, 5.30, the cat jumps up in the bed, and me and her cuddle until like 
10, 11. <laughs> we hang out and still worse than snooze a dog. up. And still she worse just, than a dog. But she's just chill. She's just sleeping with me. We're both relaxed and cuddled. Every now and then I have to, you know, play laser with her, and that's about <laughs> it. Play laser. <laughs> I got to take a break here. I will have, uh, if you're a Pink Floyd fan, closer to 520 of those tickets for the Gilmore Project. Some guys from other bands that dig Pink Floyd, and so they're going to come through, uh, do a show um, 